You're learning to code completely wrong. Do me a favor for a second and consider the following. You spend six hours a day studying cracking the coding interview. You know it from front to back and upside down and backward. You've completed every single lead code hard problem with no issue. And after months and months, you finally get the interview with the company of your dreams. And you ace it. The coding challenge was no issue. You've seen it a million times. But then... Awesome. So what are some of your favorite programming projects you've done? Uh... What frameworks do you like to work in? React, uh, Node, Big O of N squared? You collapse, and there goes your dream job. What went wrong? And all this time you've dedicated to Leet Code and reading Cracking the Coding interview, you've never actually programmed anything. You know how to code and optimize, but you don't know how to code. If there's something I've learned in my professional years as a developer, there's a lot of people that don't really know how to code. It's kind of surprising. But don't worry, Big Daddy JC has got a four-step plan for you to get you from lead code gremlin grinder to professional dev easy. These are the tips that I would have liked to hear before I started on my programming journey, so I'm gonna pass them to you. Before we jump into it, you know the drill. Like and subscribe for more programming and tech videos. All right, step one, start programming. Look, I'd be lying to you if I were to say that lead code and cracking the coding interview were completely useless. They're not. They're great resources and you should be using them. But don't just drown yourself in binary trees and big O notation. Start working with real world problems that you find. For instance, let's say you've started collecting physical media. Records, CDs, tapes, maybe even eight tracks. I don't know. But when you go to your local record shop, you take a look around and you don't remember what you have and on what medium you have it. This would be the perfect opportunity to make a programming project. Now, are there already existing solutions? Yes. But you can customize Haler, this new application to you. It can be fun, educational, and it's great practice for programming. Just build a project that lets you see what you own and add new entries from the Spotify library into your media library. But JC, I don't even know where to start. How do I make a project? What language do I use? All great questions. Let's address the first part with step two. Escape, Escape tutorial, tutorial hell. hell. If you don't know where to start, Tutorials might be the right place, but for all that is good and holy, do not, not fall into tutorial hell. Watching 15 videos on how to make Hello World in frameworks and languages that have been outdated since the early 2000s will do nothing for you. Tutorials can be great as jumping off points, or if you get stuck on a particular part of a framework or how to create a particular feature. But watching a tutorial, coding exactly what they do, and then saying you've learned something is just lying to yourself. You've developed no real skills, no real thought in that language. Don't be afraid to use resources like freecodecamp.org on YouTube. Fantastic. They make great stuff, and using their language courses can be a great starting point for learning. But make your own projects. Don't just copy what they do exactly. Exactly. Use these resources to help, but not to make. For example, for our other project, maybe they have a tutorial on making a movie database that you can adapt into your music tracking system. Now, I hear you. JC, I've only ever done lead code in Python. I can't even program. Step 2.5. Bonus. Master A language. One, pick one language. I don't care if it's Python, Java, JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, Assembly, maybe not that one. Unless it really interests you, then go for it. I mean, that's great, that's great. I want you to learn as much in that language as you possibly can. Your first product or two should be in one language and one language only. Do your lead code problems in that language. Live in that language. You should feel comfortable explaining pretty much any programming concept in that language. This will not only help you become more efficient in these concepts, but it's also gonna make learning any other language way easier after you've mastered one. If you try to learn four languages, two frameworks, and every single basic data structure all at once, you're never gonna actually pick anything up. Whereas if you learn all those concepts and structures in one language, they apply super easy to any other language you're gonna wanna learn. Step three, build a portfolio site. You have a few projects under your belt now, so you've unlocked a new project. Congratulations, it's the portfolio site. This is a really important thing to have as a new or veteran to dev. The amount of people that I know that don't have any sort of site to show off their projects is kind of crazy. Your portfolio site should be a place to show off everything you've been working on. 
show off your skills and what you know. It should show off your best and your favorite works. It allows recruiters to see what you know and how you've applied it. And a nice functional website to show it all off is a super good impression. This can also really help ease that what's your favorite project question or similar ones during an interview. If you have three, four great projects, then those recruiters are going to pull from that to ask you questions during your interview. Instead of what's your favorite project or what frameworks do you like? It can be, hey, I saw this music tracking platform you made. Why did you use the framework you did? What were some of the hardest parts of this project? Questions like these are more narrowed and easier for you to answer because you can build off the train of thought of this single project instead of everything inside your head. It's much less open-ended and you'll actually know what you're talking about. Step four, final step, never stop learning. Once you've made a few projects, mastered a language or two, and made your portfolio site, you're finally done. Not really, not at all. You're never done. As a programmer, for the rest of your career, your top priority is to keep learning. Keep up with what's current, what's new, read articles, learn new programming languages, and make more projects. Do what's fun, keep learning, stay fresh, and stay in demand. Technology is always changing, and if you don't keep learning and keep adapting with that, you're going to become obsolete when it does. Ultimately, whether you take this advice or not, the most important thing you can do to learn programming and keep up your skills is to just code. Whether that's making projects, building robots, automating your house, or lead code maxing, the most important step you can do is making sure that you code at least a little bit every single day. It is the single most important step you can take to become a great software developer. You can't become great just by reading, or watching, or listening, or hearing about programming concepts. You have to code. You need to make it. Hands on keyboard develop software. I hope you can take at least a few of these tips and let it inspire you to become a better dev. I know that these steps can help you prepare for a great and fruitful career in the world of technology. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything else you want me to talk about, leave it in the comments. I'd love to keep making content for you guys. That's it.